news and, and current, current affairs. affairs. Top stories of the day. Business, sports, music, and entertainment. Dadalhin sa inyo. Dadalhin sa inyo. Ang mas pinaganda, mas pinalawang, mas pinalakas. Radyo Pilipinas. Radio Pilipinas. Radio Pilipinas. Radio Magandang umaga po sa inyong lahat. Welcome po sa isa naman pong edisyon ng ating programang Dimsu Library on Air. Ngayon po ay araw ng Webes, December 23, 2021. Ito po ang inyong lingkod, Charity Jimenez of Frianeza. Makasama po ninyo sa loob po ng isang oras nating talakayan sa isa naman pong special na episode po ng programang Dimsu Library on Air. At uh, dahil special po ang ating episode ngayong araw, eh, special din po yung ating magiging co-host ngayong uh, sa ngayong programa po natin ito walang iba kundi ang mismong head po ng uh, Dimsu Library S ng SLUC si Dr. Nancy Galban. Good morning Ma'am Nancy. Good morning Ma'am Charity. Talagang ano ha? <laughs> Kasi minsan-minsan lang tayo magkasama dahil Yes Ma'am, uh, December 23 na. Kaya nga, mm-hmm. alam mo naman Christmas na, na. Maraming ginagawa, maraming oh, na. kailangan mga reports na kailangan may submit kaya ayan. Pero sa itong araw na ito ay isang espesyal na araw dahil ang at, sa, isa sa ating mga guests ngayon is ano, uh, one of the pillars ng aming profesyon na librarianship. But before that, isang mapagpalang umaga mga kabasa sa lahat ng tagapakinig at tagasugbaybay ng ating Dimsu Library on Air. Welcome na naman po sa isang very interesting at informative na episode natin. Ako ang iyong makakasama sa ating isang oras na talakayan. Uh, Nancy Frihiliana Galban with the team Sluk Library. Our guest for today is the former director of libraries at the Lyceum of the Philippines, Manila. She finished her Master's in Library Science and Master's of Arts in Education, Education Technology at the University of the Philippines, Diliman. She also finished her Bachelor's of Library Science at the same university. She also took quality management system in higher education certificate at Lyceum at the Philippines University in 2012. She also especially she has also a specialist course on management of library and information services certificate at College of Librarianship Wales United Kingdom in 1982. An internship program on the application of computers in libraries Certificate at Ohio State University. And she organized the Library of the Fund for Assistance to Private Education, the country's premier library for educators. Isa ako sa mga recipient niyan noon. Wow. Ayan, nung under ako ng scholarship ng aming university, I was uh, able to avail of that uh, scholarship. Yeah. With a subsidy from FAFE, she instituted the interlibrary loan system for schools and conceptualized the library collections development program for Filipiniana materials. She also initiated the Araline project database for Filipiniana. She has served professional associations at various times as president, vice president, committee chair, and member, resource speaker, lecturer, and trainer and received numerous awards from uh, not only local, national, but also international from all her work. Her passion towards academic librarianship is evident from her endless 
dedication to serve colleges and universities. At present, she was a lecturer at Centro Escolar University in their graduate school. In, 19, in 2002, she was appointed member of the Board for Librarianship of the Professional Regulation Commission. Mangkabasa, our dear viewers and listeners, we are privileged and honored to invite one of the most distinguished and highly sought personality in the librarianship profession. Our guest for today, an equally Ilocano, Prop Corazon M. Nera, the acting chair of the Commission on Higher Education Technical Committee on Library and Information Science. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Thank you very much, Charity, for that very generous introduction. I'm so happy to see you as one of our FAPI scholars. You know, FAPI scholars became leaders, outstanding uh, leaders in the community. I am so happy for that. And of course, I have to greet the most beautiful, energetic, and innovative, dynamic uh, head librarian of uh, the MMSU, SLU, or South uh, La Union Campus. I'm so happy for this opportunity to meet you all and for giving us the platform to discuss this uh, uh, highly awaited uh, CMO uh, 22 series of 2021. Thank you very much. Uh, may I just want, I, I would just like to acknowledge the following personalities uh, from uh, the Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University. Uh, of course, uh, Dr. Maricel M. Fronda, the station manager of DZAG, 97.1 kilohertz, Radio, uh, Radio Pilipinas Aguo. Of course, Miss Charity Franesa, the anchor, Mr. Glenn Cabanero, the technical staff of DZAG, Dr. Jaime Ipac uh, Manuel Jr., the university president, Dr. Juan C. Rivera, the distinguished chancellor, and of course, Dr. Sonia Isip, director, library services and development of DMMSU. Again, last but not the least, Dr. Nancy Galban, the dynamic organizer of this outstanding library program, uh, DMS, the DMMSU Library on Air. If I will have to give a reward or a, a award, I will give this the outstanding library program in the Philippines. Congratulations. And thank you very much daw po sabi ng mga at, at natutuwa po yung mga staff ng uh, Dimsu SLUC Library. <laughs> yes, ma'am Nancy. Of course. Uh, yeah. You are doing well. And this is uh, one of its kind. Uh, I think uh, UP is the one uh, having this and uh, you are next and the first in Luzon or in the uh, Ilocos region and congratulations you made me proud and I feel prouder uh, for all the librarians and of course uh, Miss uh, Franessa our distinguished FAP scholar oh, ma <laughs> si Dr. Nancy po yung ating FAP scholar po <laughs> and anyway, Ma Nancy. Mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. okay ma'am uh, Ma'am Nera, kasi ang topic po natin for today at napakaganda po na ma-share din po natin sa ating mga listeners and viewers and also yung ating mga librarians po na nakatutok ngayon. Ukol po dito sa CHED Memorandum Order Number no. 22 Series of 2021 uh, regarding po sa minimum requirements for libraries of higher education institutions common to all program. Madam Pwede po bang i-share natin a brief introduction po ukol po dito sa CHED memo na po ito? Yes, thank you, Dr. Nancy. Uh, I'll give you a sh short historical background of the CMO. Uh, in 2015, it took 
more than seven years uh, to develop this uh, CMO. Uh, in 2015, the Technical Committee on Library and Information Science, composed of the late uh, Mrs. Elizabeth Peralejo, the former president of the Philippine Librarians Association, together with Honorable Yolanda Granda as member, now the chairman of the Regulatory Board for Librarians, and yours truly as member and uh, the former uh, chairman of the Professional Regulatory Board for Librarian, so the need for a common harmonized requirements as regards the library for all programs. As you know, library requirements were embedded in the different uh, PSGs or policies and standards and guidelines for all the programs offered in the Philippines and the interpretation were at different uh, levels. The numbers of books differ from one program to another. The qualifications of librarian differ from one program to another. And yet we are referring to the same library and librarian in the same institution. So in the same year, the TCLC IS uh, drafted a working paper to serve as guidelines and the TC convened um, a group of the best minds, academic librarians representing all typologies of higher education institutions to comment to enhance and improve the draft until an acceptable, suitable and attainable standard was uh, crafted. So in 2016, the technical committee submitted these proposed standards to the Office of Programs and Standards Development of TED, and fortunately, it was uh, accepted. And uh, we had uh, uh, conducted the discussions and consultations with all the stakeholders, industry partners, and practitioners. And in the same year, um, group consultations were held uh, uh, regional uh, in Luzon, Visayas, and Mindanao, and in um, uh, were held in strategic places like uh, Subic, Cebu, and Dabao, together with uh, the CHED staff. So in 2017, uh, the final and culminating public consultation was held at CHED Auditorium and all the comments, uh, suggestions and recommendations were all incorporated in the final draft, which was submitted to the commission in bank and adopted and approved it on December 4, 2017. 2017 PAN approved but it was just um, signed uh, this year. So in 2018, that was a transition period from the old administration to the new one. So in 2019, uh, the technical committee resubmitted the uh, proposal for the consideration of the new chair, Dr. Y Prospero de, de Vera III. So apparently the chairman was not uh, satisfied, uh, happy with the proposed uh, CMO. So he submitted two uh, page rebuttal for the uh, technical committee to respond. And uh, of course the technical committee obliged, but seemingly the chairman wasn't uh, happy again. So we are we conclude that uh, the chairman has a different uh, concept of a library, maybe a digital library, a very futuristic library. And uh, uh, I know the Chad chairman is uh, a visionary and uh, I think he wanted a digital uh, transformed library for the future. So on that note, 
we feel that the delay in the signing and approval of the, the CMO was an advantage and providential because the technical committee was given the opportunity and chance to present it to the technical working group of um, uh, flexible learning. So we presented this three times and um, the panel uh, with the panel members and afforded the TC, the technical committee, the opportunity to hear the most intelligent, relevant, practical, sustainable, and attainable suggestion, recommendations of the best minds in the academe that transform the proposed CMO into the best that it can be. So requirements um, for online teaching and flexible learning modalities were included and incorporated making the libraries and librarians more responsive and relevant to the uh, requirements of the present time. So the technical committee is so grateful for the rare opportunity to dialogue with the group of scholars. And um, they help us endorse and approve uh, the proposed CMO that uh, on uh, November 2, uh, Chairman De Vera finally signed and approved the proposed CMO with the endorsement of the Philippine Association of Academic and Research Librarians and the Philippine Librarians uh, uh, Association. Uh, of course, our accredited association. So with all its imperfections, the CMO is not perfect, but uh, this is considered as a landmark in the history of academic libraries in the Philippines in particular and Philippine higher education in general. It is developmental, minimum yet progressive to guide higher institutions, uh, higher education institutions, academic librarians, academic libraries in their journey towards digital transformation and digital scholarship. So that's the background, uh, um, Mom Charity and uh, uh, Dr. Nancy, uh, long uh, uh, in the making, but it's worth it. Yes, no, no, since 2017 pa na craft po siya, do, na approve lang for 2021. Sabi nga naman ni Dr. Nancy dito, kahit na may delay, di ba, ma'am, sa approval, oh, sabi nga natin, eh, uh, niisip natin yung positive side minsan sa mga negative circumstances dahil mas napaganda pa no, yung uh, CMO na yan, lalo na naging visionary yung uh, Ched, uh, uh, chair, di ba? Oh. Kasi That's actually, ma oh, kasi ma'am ma ma Charity, actually, uh, nahihirapan din ang mga different, uh, uh, not only the HAIs, but also the public and the uh, school libraries, because the four types of libraries, dahil paiba-iba kasi yung minimum requirements. But I think this one, dahil sa nangyaring ito, nagkaroon na yung common to all programs. Kasi nun different eh. Kaya parang hirap din kami na mag up, especially when it comes to accreditation, when it comes to evaluation of the different programs of our, uh, kahit sa public libraries and school libraries. But with this one, napakaganda ang nangyari. So we are very thankful. Yung advocacy kasi nila, parang nagkaroon na sila ng legacy that, that really helped us now. Nagkaroon kami ng direction. So, yan. Yan yung magiging ano ninyo, eh, parang guide. Mm. Uh, yung CMO. Mm -hmm. Anyway, ma'am, uh, ma'am Nera, baka pwede po natin may share din. Ano po yung mga scope ng minimum requirements na ito? Na oh, yes. Po okay. Uh -oh. So, before I will share the scope of the um, of the CMO, uh, I I would just like to, to explain uh, the title of the CMO. Uh, the subject uh, or the title of the CMO is Minimum Requirements for Libraries of Higher Education Institutions Common to All Programs. 
minimum is defined as the least, smallest, lowest attainable requirement for a certain purpose, such as uh, the following. For instance, um, an, a higher institution, a higher education institution would apply for permit to operate, for permit to, re to be recognized, and uh, a permit to offer a new program, uh, this should comply with this minimum requirements. Okay, so this is just basic. However, if an institution would like to uh, apply for a higher status and recognition, such as Center of Development, Center for Ex Excellence, deregulated status, autonomous status, or university status, the library requirements are higher than the minimum. So they have to com uh, comply with the accreditation requirements because CHED recognizes and puts premium to accredi accreditation standards, which are beyond the minimum requirements. So the CHED encourages all institutions to go beyond the minimum to be able to respond to the needs of the 21st century uh, learners and educators, and also the fourth IR uh, competencies. And this will further improve the status and standards of each EIs in terms of program services and op operations of the library. And most importantly, libraries will become uh, more responsive to the requirements of online teaching and flexible learning modalities. This will be the mode of uh, learning and teaching now. We will not uh, go back to the old uh, uh, style of teaching. So uh, electronic resources will now be the center of uh, services in the libraries of academic uh, institutions. So there are 11 sections of uh, the CMO. Uh, first uh, section is the vision, mission, goals, and objectives of the library, how the library is administered, what are the components of the human resources in the academic library, what resources should be included in the library to be able to respond to the requirements of uh, faculty and students? What should be the innovative and flexible services to be offered? What would be the physical uh, setup of uh, libraries when um, uh, the face-to-face -face will happen? What information technology requirements should be uh, equipped in the library so that the uh, electronic resources should be could be accessed? How much money or what should be the financial requirements uh, needed to support the services of the library? Why a, a librarian should in be involved in linkages and networking? And... Uh, well, the usual uh, repealing clothes and transitory provision uh, for schools to be able to uh, comply with the requirements of uh, this CMO. Um, however, the, with the computerization and ICT applications, many of our libraries, I, I'm sure, uh, Dr. Nancy Galvan's uh, library is already transforming to digital uh, resources. Uh, libraries should be uh, re-engineered, reconfigured, redefined, and restructured to be relevant. Otherwise, if we will just be confined to the traditional library service, we will become irrelevant. So. Libraries have to shift 
their collections and services to online medium and electronic and digital formats. So libraries has to uh, also be competitive, uh, proactive, and flexible in managing their libraries by adapting global changes in the area of information, aggregation, curation, and dissemination. And one of those innovative activities that uh, Dr. Galban is uh, doing is the library on air. And that is uh, one of the uh, innovative. I always uh, check that when I visit library schools. Uh, and uh, I always tell them uh, if uh, DMMHU can, uh, can do it, why can't you not do it? And uh, there are several uh, 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 competencies or roles that uh, a 21st century librarian should have. And number one, they should be digital uh, repos repository creator and curator. Librarians should be social worker and moderator. They are marketer, advertiser. They should advertise like what uh, Dr. Galban is doing uh, to improve the image of the library. They can communicate. They should communicate uh, what their uh, services uh, uh, are uh, to the community. Librarians are business manager, collaborator, team worker, like the team library, website designer, builder and manager, database curator. They are educator and end user trainer. They are also facilitator, information broker, sifter of information, innovator or change agent, game changer, knowledge manager, and policy maker. And they are strategists like what you are doing right now. Thank you for the uh, uh, discussion of the image. The librarian's image have, be, have been changed, no? Uh, Madam uh, Charity, wala na, ma, lahat na ng librarian maga, magaganda, magagaling. Hmm? Hindi na sila the stereotype kind of librarians. Wala na daw yung Miss Tapia. Wala yes. na daw po yung masungit. At bawal maingay yeah. <laughs> sa mga libraries. Kasi ngayon, ang libraries natin ngayon is ano na, uh, a part of the life na. So they can already, we already have the cafe actually. We started with the cafe now in, in our library, Imam Nera actually. Before nung face-to-face -face pa, our uh, users are already having their uh, learning commons wherein they can already stay, they can even sleep. They can have uh, some discussions with their classmates over a cup of coffee. Kasi may kami kami dito eh. Ayan. Yeah. So, ano na? So yeah, na. the library is considered a third place. The first is the home, and the second is the school, and the third is the library. Where they can uh, uh, stay there, relax there. They can create, innovate, and collaborate. They don't really go there to study or to read. They, they, they go there because they want to to talk to people they want to to mingle with people uh, with the other readers okay ma'am siguro pwede nating i-share na sa kanila yung sev uh, yung kwa natin yes okay uh, so that uh, uh -huh. yung eight yeah, um, section okay. one will, six, okay yes ma'am yeah i will uh, we'll just discuss the salient feature because the others uh, the other persons are uh, easy to understand okay so number section one is the vision mission goals and objectives of the library and it should have an explain this should be explicit because the vmo of the library defines uh, its role its uh, aspiration its mission its purpose so it should be uh, displayed uh, uh, in the uh, in the premises of the library. 
it should be displayed in the bulletin boards, whether it's virtual or physical. It should be displayed or published in the library website and the FB pages. Uh, this is the only way the libraries can um, uh, make their services, uh, uh, you know, uh, visible. So they have to make noise. They should be noisy uh, to, to tell the people of the, the community what they are doing for the community. Section two is administration. The supervision of the library shall be clearly defined within the uh, organizational structure of the institution. The position of the library in the organizational chart demonstrates or depicts its uh, recognition and importance. And usually the library is under the Office of the Academic Affairs because uh, the, the libraries and the librarians collaborate with uh, the deans and faculty and it will be easier for them to talk or to coordinate if they are also under the uh, academic uh, officer. However, there are, um, there are institutions that um, have a different structure. Some librarians are under the president some are under the uh, administrative officer. Uh, Ched uh, respects uh, the practice uh, uh, for as long as the library is supported and recognized uh, well. Okay. The next is the qualifications of the head librarian. First and foremost is the librarian should be licensed because there is a law. A librarian cannot practice without a uh, uh, license. The head librarian should be a master's degree holder in library and information science or, uh, hold, or a related field. Why uh, a librarian should have a master's degree? Because the minimum requirements for a faculty to teach in the, acad uh, in the academic community is a master's degree. So the librarian should also be at par with the qualifications of the faculty because the librarian has a teaching function. She uh, conduct orientation, library or user orientation. Okay. What are the related fields? that a librarian can study to make her more competent. Uh, it could be in IT, it could be in education, it could be in management, cultural subjects, social sciences, that enhance his or subject competencies because the trend now is subject specialization. And I, I personally feel that with an MBA or a public administration degree can make a, a library better library uh, manager or library administrator. So uh, all fields cut across uh, library and information science practice. So these are acceptable. Why uh, CHED uh, allows a master's degree in related fields? Because of the dearth, scarcity of librarians uh, who are holders of master's degree. Uh, you are fortunate in Region 1 because uh, master's degree is uh, in library science is offered in uh, some of the universities there. But in other uh, uh, areas, uh, in Mindanao and uh, Visayas, uh, MLIS is not offered. So to comply with the graduate degree program, CHED allows a degree, uh, master's degree related to library science. Okay. So the other qualifications of the head librarian is a member. She should, he or she should be member of the accredited uh, 
uh, Association, uh, which is the Philippine Librarians Association Incorporated, because this is uh, the way of knowing uh, uh, what's happening in the profession. And uh, being a member of that association will uh, give you the privilege to know uh, the trends and uh, what the conferences and seminars are they organizing. And the third is at least to prepare the head librarian, he or she should be, uh, uh, she, she should have been, um, uh, she should have uh, work uh, as a section head or unit head before she or he will be uh, appointed as uh, the head or the director of the library, okay? And for higher education institution, institutions, having several campuses like you, the Don Mariano Memorial, uh, Don Ma Mariano Marcos Memorial University, all your campuses, all your uh, branches should have a licensed full-time librarian, even if your population is below 1,000. There should always be one uh, supervising the library. And the next is there should be a library advisory committee, usually known as faculty library committee. And uh, their uh, role and function is advisory. Uh, they cannot approve policies. They just advise. And uh, uh, usually the chairman is any of the deans or faculty. It should not be the librarian to be the chair because the tendency is to influence the decision of the committee. Okay. Next is uh, there should be a development and strategic plan to ensure continuous improvement. This is a roadmap of the library so that um, uh, improvements will be continued. It could be a one-year operational plan, two-year uh, operational plan, five-year plan, or 10-year plan. And this should be revisited every time, okay? as the need arises. It could be done semesterly, annually, or twice a year. The next provision is for librarians to regularly conduct uh, uh, research. Now, uh, research has been institutionalized as function of the librarian because research, uh, results of research will um, uh, improve or will be the basis for improving uh, the library services and uh, uh, operation. And it's one way of hearing uh, the sentiments of our uh, library users uh, the, if they feel that uh, they appreciate the, the services and programs the library is offering, then they can say that uh, uh, during the uh, research and surveys. The next is the presence of updated manual policies and procedures. Uh, Dr. Galvan is an accreditor and I think the number one uh, uh, evidence or uh, documents he will look into is the updated manual and policies and procedures. Uh, for face-to-face -face and uh, online, uh, especially during the, this time of pandemic. Manuals should have been uh, revisited, should have been uh, uh, reviewed to respond to the requirements of uh, the present uh, uh, way of uh, offering library service. And uh, in relation to research, an in-house evaluation of library programs should be conducted. Uh, again, I think uh, this should be one of the um, uh, evidences uh, during accreditation, and it should also be ready 
when the ARQUAT or uh, the Technical Committee of CHED will visit the library uh, because uh, this will show how successful the library is in uh, giving uh, services and operations. Now, uh, Section 3 is one of the uh, most critical uh, uh, section of the CMO. Uh, because this will define the, the, the adequacy and qualification of the personnel to be able to uh, offer quality library information ser services during whether it could be face-to-face -face or online. And the number shall be based on the user population. User population includes faculty, uh, students, um, staff, alumni, and even visitors. The size and scope of collection, the services offered, the service hours and physical facilities and programs um, of uh, the library for the implementation of online and uh, flexible learning modalities. Um, I suppose you cannot open your library uh, beyond five o'clock, if you only have one or two staff, uh, if you have several sections, uh, you have to close your sections because uh, uh, only one is left in the library. And if you have first, second, third floor of the library, the, the two floors should be closed if you are only uh, have one. So librarians can use this to justify the increase of uh, librarians and support staff, even if the suggested ratio is one is to 3,000. The ratio of one is to 3,000 for additional uh, uh, enrollees is the most realistic uh, ratio that CHED uh, can offer because of the lack of librarians. At present, we have only 10,000 in the roster of librarians. And of this 10,000, only 6,000 are active, uh, are employed. So maybe 50% or around 3,500 are working in the academic libraries with uh, 2,000 uh, academic institutions in place, they all, the 2,000 librarians were already employed as a head or librarian. And uh, only 1,000 or 500 is left to occupy the additional positions of librarians. So there's nothing left uh, more to be employed in the academic libraries. And at present, we have 3.5 million students enrolled in the academic institutions. So the, the number of librarians produced or graduates uh, every year that pass uh, the licensure examination is something like 400 every year. So our battle cry is to increase the enrollment of uh, students taking library and information science. So maybe um, uh, uh, this radio can announce uh, that there are lots of scholarship offered to students taking the, uh, the bachelor's degree in library science and even the master's degree in library science so that we can uh, fill in the 50,000 positions required to man our libraries. And many of these positions are still being created uh, in the public uh, libraries, in the school libraries, in the special libraries with the top 1,000 corporation and the academic libraries for that matter. So because of the, this, CHED uh, increased the number of support staff. 
that for every one librarian, there should be at least three uh, support staff. So if we get the best and the brightest uh, support staff for the library, they can um, uh, handle the professional, even the clerical and rotinary uh, uh, functions of the librarian so that the librarian can uh, fulfill the uh, professional job uh, that he is supposed to uh, uh, fulfill in the library. Okay. And uh, with the computerization and technology applications, some of the jobs of librarians have been computerized. So they can work uh, more comfortable and uh, they can relax uh, now uh, because they can delegate some of this to the uh, support staff. Okay. Student assistance may be. Hmm, uh used to augment the the requirements in the library but you know student assistants have their own priorities their priority is their studies so during uh, examination period they will have to skip uh, or to leave uh, from their library work to to uh, study for their uh, uh, examination uh, but be that it may, eh, they may be uh, uh, used to augment the uh, human uh, uh, requirements of the library. However, uh, the counting of their uh, services should be equivalent to the number of hours rendered required for a full-time support staff. If there are two student assistants in the library and they are... Oh, uh, rendering four hours a day, uh, two student assistants can complement or can can be equivalent to one full time uh, support staff because that's equivalent to eight hours. Okay, so in the library there should be librarians and support staff, and the librarians uh, are passers of the librarian licensure examination. And the support staff um, uh, are those uh, uh, paraprofessionals who are non-licensed or graduates of other degrees than library science or grade 12 or associate degrees. Uh, for the information of Dr. Nancy, there is an associate in library and information science pending for approval of TED. This is a two-year course mm, to provide training for support staff. And uh, uh, hopefully this will be uh, approved soon so that um, you can offer courses, uh, diploma course to enhance or to, to increase uh, the number of support staff in the library. Okay. Now we go to the most important uh, part of the CMO, it's collection management. Uh, the selection of resources, now uh, it should be, uh, uh, it will be repeated uh, that uh, the resources should now be both print and electronic. Mm -hmm. Including textbook should be the responsibility of the the faculty. Uh, the selection, recommendation, and evaluation of books, including textbooks, is the responsibility of the faculty. And the acquisition, ordering, and procurement will be the responsibility of the librarian. And without uh, infringing uh, copyright law or violating the intellectual property code, okay? CHED respects the right of the HEIs to prescribe their own textbooks. There are no, There is no list uh, given by CHED uh, recommending uh, what textbooks should be included uh, 
for uh, the faculty to use. You have the right to choose. Uh, its its EIs is uh, is given the freedom to prescribe. And the next is uh, very important because uh, this will guide the librarian to to specify the acquisition uh, strategies. This is the collection development plan, or the the. Uh, it should be written. Uh, the policy should be written. Uh, and uh, the ratio of progressive development of both print and electronic resources uh, in support of the research uh, instruction uh, of the university or the institution, including uh, teaching and flexible learning modalities. The plan should be prepared by the librarian in consultation with the faculty library committee or advisory committee, and it should be approved uh, with the imprimatur of the administration. It's not the head librarian who will do the approval. It should be by the administration. And a periodic evaluation should be done if you if you can do it uh, yearly or semesterly, uh, that is very uh, good for you. Okay, so that you can do your uh, collection profiling. Uh, maybe uh, what should be uh, replaced next year should now be indicated in your uh, collection plan or uh, database. Uh, collection database, okay? And a regular weeding and the selection program shall be in, are undertaken to make the collection uh, relevant and up to date, okay? Now the numbers, we are now in numbers. For newly established institution or for those who are uh, preparing for recognition and uh, to start uh, college or an institution, the core collection or the startup collection should be at least 3,000 titles. And in the granting of government recognition, the total collection should be 3,000 titles. Titles uh, are counted once. Huh? These are not in volumes because volumes can be duplicated, could be multiple copies. How did we come up with 3,000 and 5,000? In the third summary of the Dewey Decimal Classification System, there are 10,000 classic numbers assigned uh, to a subject. So there are, at, uh, if they, this is so, at least 50% or 5,000 of these subjects or books should be represented in the library. And 5,000 5, for a starting institution or college will be enough to support the curriculum, research, and even recreational requirements of students. In the university, this should be doubled, 10,000 because the university offers more programs and students should have more uh, references, resources, or textbooks for that matter to support the instruction, research, and even the extension programs of the university. Uh, these are the trifocal function of the university. Okay, And the ratio of uh, print and electronic shall be determined by the institution with the uh, recommendation of the librarian, of course. Chad did not tell you, did not uh, specify how many electronics should be there or how many prints should be the, uh, included. Because Chad uh, recognizes the ability of the institution to 
run faster or to be more uh, you know innovative in complying with the requirements and to become uh, digitally uh, transformed uh, earlier than the other uh, institution okay and uh, it is recommended uh, that the educational resources can be uh, uh, used, can be uh, a supplement uh, for the uh, subscribe or for the uh, acceptable uh, resources in the library. However, open source content uh, is not uh, it's a challenge because uh, perpetual access to the uh, to the collection is not insured. So Ched is recommending uh, the the fee based or the subscribe electronic uh, resources to ensure uh, perpetual access because this should be all these titles should be listed and made available. Uh, in the discovery tool or online public uh, catalog. So if uh, the CHED ARQUAT or the technical committee will visit the library, they will look for this and they should uh, check the link whether the uh, title is still active. Otherwise, the librarian uh, will have to explain how how come the link is no longer there, okay? To continue to promote Philippine arts, culture, and local history materials, the library should, uh, should uh, maintain Filipiniana, hmm? uh, both print and electronic formats, equivalent to 10% of the code total collection. So if you have 5,000 uh, collection, at least 500 of those should be Filipiniana and the usage should be monitored uh, either manually or electronically. And to for general education uh, sources, uh, this should be adequate there should be adequate relevant and current resources again both print and non-print uh, resources should be provided okay for each undergraduate program offering for each subject in the curriculum the library should provide five relevant book titles for each major subject published within the last five years. And this is in combination of print and electronic uh, resources. Okay. And Ched did not specify how many print and how many electronic. It will be the decision of the institution. And of course, with the recommendation of the librarian so the responsibility of the librarian is uh, very crucial in uh, explaining to management how many of these uh, should be in the library uh, to respond uh, to the uh, online uh, requirements and flexible learning modalities of the institution uh, however there are uh, subjects that uh, do not have uh, regular uh, new editions uh, like in the social sciences, mathematics, and uh, the recency within the five, last five years can be waived. Uh, again, the explanation uh, will be on the hands of the librarian why, and, uh, why she was not able to comply with the five titles. And in the graduate program, this will be doubled. In addition to the five titles in the Adger graduate uh, program, uh, additional five titles should be added to respond to the requirements of the graduate students. Uh, graduate students should be exposed to several resources uh, 
from different point of point of view uh, when they are doing research. So ten titles will be required of that. Okay. Again, the ratio it will be determined by the institution and the librarian. And uh, additional, one of these titles should be published by a reputable uh, academic uh, university. For reserve, uh, those uh, uh, titles or books that are in demand and they are usually put on reserve, at least one print and another uh, electronic uh, format should be made available. The print one will be used by those on-site users and the electronic format will be used by the uh, uh, off-site uh, users because uh, even after the pandemic, many of our students will not be going to the library physically, uh, and, uh, especially if they can access the resources uh, uh, electronically. Okay? For periodical collections, there should be at least 50 titles in the in the library and again this will be in combination of electronic or print and the decision of how many a print and how many electronic will depend on the, the institution and of course the librarian and uh, for um, each undergraduate uh, program there should be at least three titles to support each program. So uh, agriculture uh, should have three, forestry should have three, uh, IT should have three uh, the titles uh, per program. And uh, the ratio of print and non-print will again be the decision of the institution and the librarian. For the journals requirements for the graduate program, in addition to the three undergraduate uh, program requirements, additional of two refereed or peer-reviewed uh, journals should be uh, made available and uh, the total, uh, making a total of five uh, uh, professional journals per uh, program and uh, the refereed uh, and uh, peer-reviewed uh, uh, journals should be uh, made available either print or electronic okay what else okay. print audiovisual materials should also be made available to respond to the requirements, especially uh, streaming uh, media uh, are very useful for graduate students uh, who are uh, doing uh, online uh, learning. Uh, I think you are offering a distance or online learning in your uh, campus. The next uh, uh, Provision is for special collection, including thesis and dissertations, because uh, uh, the use of thesis and the, the dissertations are regulated, uh, uh, is regulated in some of the institutions. And uh, this should be made available in print or electronic without violating, of course, uh, uh, property, intellectual property code. Next is, I think, uh, uh, for some of the, our SUCs and LUCs with satellite campuses, the minimum requirements for professional holdings for both undergraduate and graduate program, specific uh, to the program being offered shall be maintained. So Dr. Nancy, you cannot share your collection to the other branches. They should have their own. You cannot transfer your 
uh, periodicals to the other branches. The branches should have uh, should have their own. You have to maintain your own uh, collection so that uh, if the CHED or technical panel or technical committee or a creditor will come to you, you are always ready. Okay. Provision number 13 is a special case for local universities and colleges that they may share their resources with the city provincial libraries in the locality. They can uh, share or they can list, uh, they can include in the listing of the resources uh, relevant titles available in the uh, public uh, library. And they can be counted as their own in compliance with the library collection requirements of the CMO. Because they feel that uh, they are uh, supported by local budgets so that is the justification for organization i think this is uh, uh, understood well by the librarians that uh, the collection should be organized uh, in accordance to acceptable international um, uh, standards of bibliographic uh, description and classification so all librarians uh, knew uh, their DDC, their Library of Congress, their resource description and access, including Mark 21 and Dublin Core. These are a um, uh, set of uh, descriptors to uh, make uh, their, uh, the information access accessible through online uh, catalog. Okay. And there should be, this is a must now for li libraries, there should be online catalog or a discovery tool that will be made available for easy access. Uh, there are a lot of free open source, uh, free uh, library systems offered. Uh, uh, libraries can uh, request uh, and they can also customize their own uh, library inform uh library integrated system through the college of Inter uh, information technology okay for purposes of identification all printed library collection shall be stamped with ownership so uh makita kung uh, yung collection ni Ma'am Nancy is the collection of Dr. Son, uh, Sonia, so because of the ownership. But for electronic resources, I don't know how you will uh, print your uh, ownership, uh, uh, stamp of ownership, but I understand you can use the watermark of your institution to show that, your electronic, uh, that you own that electronic uh, resources, okay? For pre preservation and uh, conservation, I think that is very uh, uh, easy to understand. There should be preventive measures to protect and preserve the collection, especially in, the, in uh, provinces and localities where uh, floods, uh, typhoons, and earthquake. Uh, kept on coming, visiting the locality, there should be a disaster preparedness response and recovery plan. Uh, there, there have been uh, lots of uh, examples uh, uh, available and you can adapt this uh, for your collection. Okay, And since these uh, are not... Uh, I don't know if you are, that's part of your curriculum, uh, Dr. Nancy, uh, prevention and conservation subjects. If this is not offered in the library school, maybe the uh, library personnel should be uh, encouraged to attend, to attend the, these training programs on preservation and conservation because this is our specialized uh, training and uh, uh, 
being offered during uh, seminars and workshops. Okay? Going on for services and utilization, the library shall provide a variety of services and tools to support the teaching, uh, research, and extension, extension programs. Librarians are, have been doing this. Um, now it's our uh, opportunity to transform the traditional services and programs into non-traditional programs with the use of technology. And these are, uh, uh, can be done face-to-face -face or online. You have been doing reference and information services. You can do it face-to-face -face or online. Um, now it becomes non-traditional because we do it online. Library instruction online, inter library and uh, intra library loans through Padala or book, book uh, drop, document delivery face to face or online, selective dissemination of information face to face of, or online, remote access to electronic uh, resources. I think this is now the centerpiece of the library services uh, being conducted uh, among academic libraries, remote access to electronic resources, software platforms that support plagiarism, uh, to uh, detection, reference management, including citation, bibliography making, and uh, uh, etc. And now for innovative and flexible uh, uh, library services, even beyond the pandemic, this will still be offered as the regular uh, library services. Could be done um, virtually or face-to-face. -face. Uh, number one is virtual library. Students and faculty can access the collection through your OPAC, your website, or digital library. Continuous circulation service through face-to-face -face or online through book padala or courier, book pickup, online document delivery, scanning or digitization. Libraries can start their electronic um, collection through scanning or digitization. Uh, but uh, uh, aware of the intellectual property code, make sure you are not infringing copyright laws, and photocopying and electronic database instruction and training. And the use of purchase, subscribe electronic uh, resources shall follow what is uh, uh, included or inscribed in the uh, license agreement. There, there are rules and policies to be observed there. And uh, uh, one of the most important uh, responsibility of the library is to promote and market um, uh, their, uh, to the users their collection services and uh, programs uh, if uh, even if you have uh, the best uh, intentions uh, of reaching out uh, your clients if you are not promoting them then it will become uh, useless and one of the best um, uh, way of promoting the library is through the air so congratulations dmmsu a library on air I, uh, I like that very much. You can promote everything there on air. Okay? So the next is physical library. Will there be physical libraries after the pandemic? What is the future of uh, uh, our libraries? I suppose there will still be physical libraries. Uh, and um, when face-to-face -face will happen, at least 10% of the, the enrollment should be seated at one time, okay? And libraries should uh, provide spaces for discussion, creation, and innovation. There should be uh, 
adequate space for office use. The librarian's office should be visible so that uh, uh, the students will not be intimidated uh, to go to, to consult her. There should be uh, uh, storage uh, for collection and supplies so that everything will be in place. And it's recommended that at least a conservation corner should be provided. There should be lighting and proper lighting and ventilation in all the areas. I think uh, in the La Union, I think you still have uh, trees around the green uh, environment, but for uh, places that uh, are hot, I think uh, air conditioning should be uh, planned so that students and faculty will visit the library open, uh, open regularly. And uh, furniture should be comfortable. And uh, uh, PWD is, is comfort and uh, provisions such as ramps, railing, comfort rooms should be made available for special needs. And there should be emer emergency exits, fire extinguisher, uh, emergency light and the like for the uh, safety and um, uh, comfort of uh, the users. Okay, for ICT, we have been talking about print and non-print electronic. Uh, if there are no ICT or computers available, then we will never be able to access the resources. So the library shall have the basic infrastructure to support the IT-enabled operations and services of the library, uh, such as um, internet-connected uh, computers with productivity software. Of course, there should be Wi-Fi access, printers, scanners, and information. Okay, As you uh, may uh, note, uh, it, it's noted or it it's not included uh, as to the number of um, computers. Uh, what is adequate? What is the uh, number of computers that uh, are, is adequate to respond to the, to the requirements of students and faculty? Chad did not specify how many computers should be made available, neither uh, the MBPAs, uh, MBPS, the download speed. Uh, uh. So it's up to the institution and with the recommendation of the librarian on how many uh, computers is adequate. Uh, at first, we recommended at least 1% of the total uh, population equivalent to the total popula population should be uh, the number of computers to, to be in the library. But uh, Chair did not specify that, okay? Adequate computing machines, uh, devices, laptops, tablets to access the electronic resources. And one of the progressive uh, developmental uh, uh, recommendation of the CMO is for the, a library to have a library automation plan to establish and implement an integrated library system. Uh, actually, the ILS is considered uh, uh, an old or obsolete already. There are new uh, uh, integrated library system uh, available already. So uh, you have a strong uh, college of computer uh, technology so you can uh, uh, you can collaborate with them to be able to to have an ILS uh, uh, a plan and this will facilitate the application of new Mod modules to 
perform the technical and reader services functions of the library. And now I think uh, the library shall have an official website to serve as a get gateway to its online catalog. Uh, I think uh, all libraries have their own website. They have their own FB pages uh, uh, this time. Uh, so that the electronic learning resources such as online database, ebooks, e-journals, and online services can be accessed. Okay, for finance, Chad did not specify how much is the library fee to be um, charged because uh, uh, for financial matters, uh, Chad uh, respects the, the uh, decision and strategies of schools. But it is the responsibility of the head librarian to prepare the budget, annual budget proposal to support the entire library. And the, this budget should, uh, if approved, should be used for uh, library development. Uh, this uh, budget should not be used to pay for the salaries uh, of uh, staff, um, librarians, and consultants. It should be uh, solely uh, used for, to improve library services and development, okay? And if the budget is not enough, the librarian should explore other ways to augment the financial resources, okay? Through linkages and networking. So that is the one of the reasons why librarians should engage in linkages and networking because in, through this they can uh, make friends they can um, uh, collaborate with other libraries and uh, through this they can uh, uh, they can uh, request for grants and uh, uh, funding to increase uh, their collection, and even training. So librarians are encouraged to engage in local, regional, and international linkages and participate in institutional activities, cooperative program, as well as community service learning. I think many librarians or libraries were involved in community pantries during uh, last year and even now. Maybe they can um, uh, help... Uh, develop reading habits of public schools through radio programs, storytelling come alive through radio. So I'm so uh, happy with this program, okay? So section 10 is the repel, repealing clause that the supersedes, uh, this same of supersedes all previous issuances uh, for inconsistent or in contradictory with any of the provision uh, hereof. And uh, schools, libraries are given uh, three years, non-extendable period to comply with the uh, provisions of the CMO, which was signed uh, by the Honorable um, Dr. Prospero E. De Vera Jr., November 2, 2021, that uh, ends the presentation of the uh, CMO 22 series of uh, 2021. I hope um, uh, with your uh, help and assistance in disseminating uh, this CMO, I hope everybody will be, uh, be able to understand, uh, apply the provisions of this CMO uh, for the improvement of higher education institution, particularly the libraries of higher educational institution. So thank you, thank you very much. Uh, I cannot thank you enough for giving this platform and segment and uh, congratulations. Thank you very much, Ma'am Nera, because it was comprehensively discussed, uh, this new CMO.
number 22 series of 2021. Uh, at this time, ma'am, na our, our also instrument in AACOP or yung accrediting agency na state universities and colleges of the Philippines, where I am also an, a member, uh, we are already uh, changing or revising the instrument just to adapt with this new CMO, which is more, uh, uh, ano ba parang mas nakakabuti sa amin ngayon. Yung parang, kasi we will have the same to follow, hindi katulad nung dati na kanya-kanya kami ng, <laughs> ng standard na ginagawa. Kasi nga, sa dami ng standard na, uh, different standards na nakikita din namin. So, at this time, with this, with ma'am, kailan po siya mag effective three years from now? No, it's effective. It's effect. Uh, it's in effect already. But you are, the uh, the schools are given uh, three years to implement. So they can do it uh, gradually uh, within three years. Ah, okay, ma'am. Kasi nga yung sabi nga natin yung sa integrated. Kasi nga uh, we have this integrated library system na sinasabi natin. Now we're in yung kasi explanation ni ma'am. Katulad sa amin ano, we have three campuses dito sa Dinsu. Now, we always claim na yung parang kung ano yung mayroon connections ng isang campus, it is already integrated as one sa amin na rin. So, we could also uh, show to our accreditors or sa ARPAT namin na during sa mga COPC namin, kung ano yung nandoon sa kabila, we could also uh, also present also to our evaluator na it's an integrated parang ganun um, okay ba yun? yeah electronic resources can be shared so you can share uh, the subscription of one campus uh, may be shared but the physical books I, I think it's not allowed electronic can be done okay kahit integrated na kami ma'am <laughs> mm, okay mm. kasi yung na explanation. Yun kasi yung narinig ko kanina sa explanation naman. So, kaya I want to know para naman we will know what we're going to do. Especially next year, marami na naman kaming program for COPC and then accreditation na naman namin. So, parang at least we are given uh, enough uh, knowledge how are we going to address this uh, situation at this yeah. time. <laughs> it's easier now because through electronic all the campus can claim that for as long as it's accessible. Uh, oh, ma'am, kasi at this time, kasi we are more uh, adept now to electronic. Kasi, yes. Okay. Kasi sa, ano kasi, when, when you say physical kasi, ma'am, if the book is a professional one in, ano, you can only purchase one book kasi that is very yes. expensive. Okay. But when it's already the electronic, uh, you can also share this one or the book is digitized, then you can already, if we have already this uh, system in us, then we can already share. At least, uh, they can download or upload or whatever, and then the one user can be used by uh, many users at the same time. Exactly. So that's the advantage of electronic. You can share, uh, the three campuses can share those collections they can be accessed uh, at the same time. And there is no limit uh, if, you, the, if the discovery tool is open 24 over 7, your students can access uh, 24 over 7. Uh -huh. So th that is the advantage. It will be easier for schools to comply with the five titles now because uh, for as long as the link is uh, ready, uh, at the time uh, the, the student uh, is accessing, you can share that or you can claim that as your own. Because sharing is, uh, is uh, uh, what uh, is recognized or uh, what do you call that? Uh, uh, puede. Uh, uh, puede yung gamitin. So, mas madali ngayon mag-comply because uh, of the format electronic for as long as you have uh, the internet uh, connection uh, napakadali even your uh, uh, if you subscribe to one database of electronic uh, electronic journals and 
thousands of those titles are uh, included or in in that uh, subscription wow that's a lot hmm? if 50 lang yung requirements you have more than enough and ibsco ibsco has a lot of uh, peer reviewed or internationally referred journal included in that database Thank you, ma'am. Kasi yun ang pinaka-crucial eh. When it comes to any uh, accreditation and as well as uh, uh, evaluation, yung ang crucial kasi doon is the ratio of the licensed librarian as well as the collections. Yun ang pinaka kwan natin. Yun ang pinaka-water luminsan sa amin kasi. Yes, oo. It's always the weakness of the institution non-compliance uh, in terms of uh, human and, and collection. Pero yeah. ngayon, madali na kasi if you have the link and uh, the curating, no? uh, it should be uh, a collaboration of the faculty and the librarian uh, to do the selection, especially in the uh, open educational uh, uh, resource. Napakadami yan, napakadami ang um, scholarly publication there. But the challenge is uh, to select, how, how to evaluate uh, what should be included in your listing. Kaya yung mayroon dedicated librarian dapat na nagtitingin ng uh, new uh, titles from the open source, uh, open, open source content. Okay. You don't even have to buy for as long as uh, the the resource is readily available. There's always a link there. Okay, ma'am. So, ano na lang natin, ma'am? So, ano yung what is the importance of the same O uh, number 22 series of 2021 in this 21st century educational landscape in the academe as well as ma'am Mrs. yun na po ma at the same time. Yes, uh, so <laughs> Well, as I, I said earlier, uh, the CMO is not perfect, uh, but it serves its own uh, the purpose uh, as a starting point for libraries in the HEIs to transform its resources to digital resources because that is the trend now. We cannot go back to the traditional, the print, you know, and. Uh, whether we like it or not, we have to accept, we have to embrace uh, electronic resources. And uh, this is a stepping stone, hmm? minimal. Uh, maraming nagsasabi, oh, tipid naman yung CMO nyo, masyadong mababa yung uh, numbers na require ninyo. Pero, well, uh, hindi naman lahat ng schools ay pare-pareho. In the preparation of this CMO, we considered all types of schools and uh, institutions, even in the remote areas. We did not base it, uh, uh, or we did not just consider NCR libraries. We also uh, considered colleges and institutions in far-flung areas. And we know their challenges, their, uh, their um, situations. Oh, they don't e some don't even have electricity available internet for that matter. So uh, it's a slow, slow, but uh, towards that um, uh, digital scholarship uh, for Philippine academic libraries. And thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to explain and present hmm, uh, this CMO. Okay, thank you very much po, Ma'am Carazon Nera, for your time na binigay po sa ating uh, programa at uh, nalaman po namin no, in detail itong CMO number 22, series of 2021, the minimum requirements for libraries of higher education institutions common to all programs. So, bago po namin kayo bibitawan, Ma'am, meron po muna ang i-award o ipipresent si Dr. Nancy Galban na e-certificate po para po sa inyo. Okay. So, uh, Dimsu is very uh, uh, sabi natin na fortunate for this uh, rare chance to be one to be with one of the pillars of our profession. Actually, 
uh, ma'am, uh, napakaganda ng legacy na sabihin na natin. Kasi nga, alam po natin na you have worked hard for this, uh, to have this uh, standard that we should, we should follow. So at this time, uh, Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, sa Pilang Baknotan La Union, Integrated Library System presents this Certificate of Appreciation to Professor Corazon M. Nera, Acting Chair, Chad Technical Committee on Library and Information mm -hmm. Science, for sharing her invaluable knowledge and expertise on the topic, CHED CMO Number 22 Series of 2021, Minimum Requirements for Libraries of Higher Education Institution Common to All Programs during the DIMSU Library on Air Program at South La Union Campus, Ago La Union. Given this 23rd day of December 2021, signed Dr. Jaime Apac Manuel Jr., University President. Congratulations, ma'am. Thank you very much for Ma'am Corazon Nera. Okay. So, si Ma siguro Ma'am, sa puntong ito ay magko-closing na po tayo. No, wala na po yata sa linya si Ma'am Corazon. But anyway... Outstanding. Okay. Sige Ma'am, well, pakiulit paki Ma'am. Nawala si Ma'am sa kanya. Eh. Kasi magkakaroon pa po tayo ng photo ops Ma'am after this one. Okay, thank you. Uh, sa puntong ito, ayan nag- Dr. Nancy, did you did you submit Yes, ma'am. We have already submitted our uh, some of the uh, the documents yeah. needed, ma'am, for that uh a prestigious award. <laughs> okay. Okay. Uh, uh, sa puntong ito, kami po ay magpansamantalang magpapaalam at ako po limuli ang yung kabasa. Nancy Frihiliana Galvan with the team Sloop Library. In behalf, we would like to acknowledge Dr. Jaime Ipak Manuel Jr., our university president. Dr. Jo Joan Camus Rivera, our Chancellor, Dr. Sonia Siago Isip, our Director for Library Services and Development, and most especially to our Chair of the Chair Technical LIS, uh, Ma'am Professor uh, M. Nera. Mapagpalang umaga po sa ating lahat. At sa ngalan din po ng Salam. lahat ng bumubuo ng DZAG Radio Pilipinas Agoo, headed by Station Manager Ms. Maricel Fronda, ito po ang inyong lingkod, Charity Jimenez Frianeza, nag na po ng isang magandang umaga sa inyong lahat. God bless everyone, stay safe and stay healthy. Ma'am, naisubmit mo, naisubmit mo, hopefully. Mag-picture mo na tayo, ma'am. Inyong napakinggan ang tapang kaalaman ng Sili Aklatan, Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, South London Campus, SLUT Library, the storehouse of knowledge, library on air. Muli nyo kaming samahan sa susunod na webis at yenes, alas 10 hanggang alas 11 ng umaga para sa panibagong kaalaman. Dito lang sa 97.1 DZH Radio Pilipinas, Sagoon.